the key to freedom is responsibility. So you have to ask yourself in, in all your social conversations, how much do you see people stepping up to be responsible for their lives and what their lives look like? If you're not hearing that conversation, then no. I think that where the world is now is that they're hating tyranny, but they're not embracing, I want to be responsible for myself first. People still are looking for permission and they're looking for help and certainly looking to their government for help still. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy focused, audited, and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. Cake Wallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Christopher Gronsky, a freedom fighter whose passion is teaching people to take responsibility for their own liberty and freedom. Chris shared his theory of state versus federal citizenship and his love for Monero as a tool for opting out. Narrow Talk starts now. All right. Hey, good to see you. Uh, you too, man. Uh, you and, you up. and Sanita did a, such a great time at the conference. I, I, I met a lot of great people. I had a good time. Um, I spent a little bit of time at the Bitcoin conference, you know, and um, completely different vibe. I mean, I enjoyed Jordan Peterson and uh, his talk and, you know, and, and even that it was, you know, it was very Bitcoin uh, oriented and such. And, you know, I would have loved to just heard some of his social sentiment and all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was very corporate there and, and it uh, wasn't as cozy and, and as socially uh, uh, connecting as it was at the Monero conference. So I really like that. Plus, you know, with everybody feeling the way they do about their privacy and about, you know, government and such as that, you know, it has just a completely different vibe. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, man, I thank enjoy you. that. Thank you for right. contributing to it. You were, you were part of the vibe there for sure. <laughs> it was a good time. It was, it was really good. I, I liked a lot. And I think that um, we probably would do, you know, more get togethers and stuff like that. If we're in Florida, I mean, we're, um, you know, sometimes uh, in the summertime, we, we definitely are in New Hampshire doing our things here. But uh, yeah, we're going to be up there for Pork Fest. I forget. I know. Sunny said, said you, yeah, we'll, we'll be there. We, awesome. You guys are staying in the cabin in. We're staying in the cabin in. <laughs> we have a place in the campground. And, you know, so it'll be a, a continuation of a good get together. So especially. Awesome. Especially this community of people who uh, who love privacy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, cool. that's that's awesome. I didn't know you, we would be. Even, okay, cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been, even more I, excited than I was. For pork I know it was. It was. Um, I think I've missed two pork fests in all the time that we've been doing pork fests since the inception of the Free State Project. Right, you're saying that's amazing. Yeah, so you you, you were kind of part of the the Free State Project from the from the get go. Not, not officially, although we voted for New Hampshire, and then um, the, with the Free State Project here, we've we've been a part of you know all of the the kind of events, and and then you know that creates the community of people that we hang with. So yeah. you know it's uh, so yeah we've we've been very supported supportive, but you know I was living in New Hampshire since uh, uh, since eighty seven, so I was here before you know. Or is cool, I, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're was, an OG. It's been cool a while, but I grew up in Orlando. You know, that's where I, you know, I used to work at Disney. Okay. And all that. So that's the other freedom-loving part of the part of this country. It, they have they have their own unique vibe I guess, <laughs> down there. So it's been good. I I'm, well, now uh, now it feels like Disney World is everywhere, right? Now everything. But now it feels like we're living in. Everywhere. I was there before yeah. Michael Eisner decided to make Bloom. You know. Disney was exclusive. You had to go there to get yeah. stuff that were Disney. And when he changed that, they made him a lot of money, but it definitely changed the, the, the beauty of, of, of being at Walt Disney world. You worked there. I used to work there. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. I, I did character work. I played Tigger, Goofy, stuff like that. Get out of here. Really? No, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I did a lot of acting in, in Central Florida. I used to do dinner theater work when I was in high school and, and did, you know, community shows and college stuff in high school. All, it was all, everything was theater work down in, in Orlando. That's what I, I, that's what I thought I would do when I would, you know, I was going to be on Broadway and stuff like that. And, you know, it just, it's, life just doesn't show up the same way. I joined the Navy and then everything changed and all that stuff. So, you know. Awesome, man. So uh, you're a talented guy. So why don't you? You got to tell everybody about yourself because there's there's uh, yeah. what, your whole story. Let's let's. Well, I mean, it's a, the whole story, but the idea um, is that um, I mean, you know, I was I grew up military family. My my parents were in the Navy. My brothers, all, everybody, all the kids in my family were in the Navy. I was in the Navy for a short time, and uh, so you know, we have you know, we're very patriotic and all. That's just typical when you're growing up in a military family. So. Um, and, and then um, uh, in the 80s, uh, I got into uh, uh, doing biblical research and, and, and fellowshipping stuff. I'm a Christian. And so um, we did a lot of um, scriptures in the sense of, of studying um, Greek and Hebrew and, and that. So I learned a lot about uh, doing biblical research. And, um, and we would do fellowships and, you know, and all that stuff. And so that's, that was my, you know, my background with respect to as a Christian. So I didn't realize how much that... Um, the study of that was going to play into looking into statute code law and the things that deal with with government moving to new hampshire from orlando um in the 80s um that was when i first started doing my own business and stuff i used to have a high-rise window cleaning company and uh uh did that for a number of years and uh and then there you know so i was paying quarterly taxes and doing business stuff and and that was all you know yeah, and I was raising, you know, we have my ex-wife and I, we have two children. They're here in New Hampshire. And uh, and someone sent me a book uh, called Vultures and Eagles Clothing, in which I learned that there were two types of citizens in the United States. There are state citizens and there are federal citizens. And and it was astonishing. And, and it was in that context of learning about that that I found out that the federal citizen and resident alien have income tax liability and a state citizen does not. And uh, and so at that time, I began to uh, correspond with the IRS, letting them know that I didn't have a tax liability and uh, and 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 went through a, a communication with them. And ultimately, I th they had uh, levied about twelve hundred dollars out of my bank account. And um, and that's when I um, um, and it was in that time it was in the late 90s. Um, there was the truth and taxation hearing. Uh, with Bob Schultz and I don't know if you ever heard about all that, but they did a uh, a hearing in Washington where they dealt with IRS and whether the uh, uh, the tax code was being properly um, implemented or what have you and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met um, it was at that time that I met G. Edward Griffin from Creature from Jekyll, the guy that wrote the Ch Creature from Jekyll Island, got a part of his organization. I was a state coordinator for We the People in New Hampshire. And, and got to meet Joe Bannister, Sherry Jackson, a lot of these people who had left the IRS who were former IRS agents. And um, and it was great just being a part. One of the things that I wanted to do was be a part of the income tax or the tax conversation in New Hampshire. And and it was at that time that I was part of We the People um, that, um, you know, even like uh, the Pork Fest and such, is that we had a presence there and we were talking to people about uh, not filing and not paying. Now, what I was doing personally was not the same of what, what they were doing with the truth and taxation hearing. And and back then, you know, if you do a Google search on my name and look at pictures and stuff, you know, I was demonstrating from the IRS federal building and, and all that, you know, so there's pictures. My kids are there with signs and all. So I've, I've been in this space since the late 90s and I've been helping people to stop filing income tax since um, early 2000s, you know, uh -huh. um, I had done a pa passport process in January of 2001 in which I did my passport as a state citizen. And um, and I remember in 2004 being a part of Ed and Elaine Brown's IRS trial in New Hampshire. And, um, and they were saying that they didn't have an income tax liability, that they were not, uh, you know, federal citizens. Now, they 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 just stopped filing and were just resisting, if you will. They weren't, uh, I'm not aware that they were doing any type of communication with the IRS, that there was a difference in their uh, their stand. And I remember being at the trial and seeing 
the IRS was using their passport application against them or establishing their federal citizenship by their passport. And when I was seeing that, I said, oh, well, I'm glad I did my passport as a state citizen and not a federal citizen, which has that liability. And it was at that in 2004 that I began to help other people change their status from a federal citizen to a state citizen in the passport process. And so we've been helping American people all over the world change that status through the passport process um, and the State Department. And we have we have our process has, has been honed and changed with communication from the State Department as we have these uh, documents that we submit with the State Department. Afterwards, uh, when people do that process, uh, we do a FOIA request um, for their passport file from the Secretary of the United States, and those documents are signed by the Secretary of the United States, wedding signatures, and 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 we've we'll, we're prepared to use those in court. And now I've had no clients in court. We don't, you know, it's very easy to. Um, to deal with IRS in, in work and such, but you have to stay out of that jurisdiction. Your paperwork cannot be incorrect. And most of the time people are filling out incorrect paperwork, which is what the IRS uses to create your liability. It's your own testimony under penalty of perjury that creates liabilities for you. Mm. And um, and so we have classes online at destinationfreedom.org uh, where um, I, I have a... Um, it's like a, a six or seven hour class that shows exactly how um, there are two types of citizens and how the the tax code clearly, uh, this is one of the things that people don't realize is that the income tax is absolutely constitutional. Okay. It's not, it's not just being done willy nilly or anything like that. They have the authority in the constitution to uh, tax and regulate that federal citizen because it's a creation of the Congress, unlike the state citizen that w the citizens of the states are actually created the state governments and it was the state governments that created the federal government. So it, that's the hierarchy of authority or sovereignty that uh, federal courts and other courts have recognized and we have that body of data. All right, wait, wait, hold on. We got to, we got to back, back up. Gotta unpack all that stuff, but <laughs> yeah, because yeah, so, I'm sure you have plenty of questions. I, about I know, that. No, I know nothing about this other than like the five minutes when I spoke to you when I was in Puerto Rico, <laughs> and you said you want, you know, we were talking about Monero, you wanted to participate in Monerotopia, right, right, um, and then at the present, you know, at Monerotopia itself, you get, you gave a talk. Uh, that was a very honest. short. That I'll was a very. I talk to a lot of people, so yeah. I think everybody that was there, I already talked to. Talk. So I just had this like over overview. It was a yeah, very quick which time. Is cool. <laughs> and I, I was so shot by that. I'm not gonna lie. I, I didn't oh, really cool. pick up much. So yeah. I want you to, to to zoom out a little bit here. So you're, sure. you're, you're saying a lot of things. So like me, Doug Tuman, you know, I've I've been paying taxes like a sucker since you know since since day one. You know, like most from, like most from of when I when I was selling ice cream on the beach as a, as a teenager. You know, and, right. Since then, I've always had the you know the 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 job with the paycheck, and they, and they and they take my taxes right out, and whatever I settle up at the end of the year, whatever I'm owed. In fact, I, I you know I'm usually one of those guys that usually gets some some money back. Uh, Monero, you know, it's uh, see this community is perfect for this kind of concept. Because here's the yeah. here's the reality. Uh, um, let me just talk about the idea of of some of the people that are having problems. The, wait, 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 no, just hold oh, on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about like, the Monero. You know, then, yeah. what, what, when you state citizen, federal citizen, so a guy like me, you know, not, not, nobody, nobody wants to pay taxes, uh, but you're telling me there, you believe there's some loophole to avoid no, no, we're federal taxes. We're or, not talking loopholes. Wrong, wrong see, see, right, right away, it's, it's how you're looking. You can't even believe yeah. it. There must be some <laughs> kind of loophole. No, we're not talking about a loophole. We're talking about jurisdiction. That's what we're talking so, about. So uh, how do you become – what do you mean you, be, you you become a state citizen? Uh, so, that you're no longer a federal citizen? And when you say you change your passport, so mm -hmm. – Yeah, federal citizen. The State Department defines U.S. Citizen, US citizenship by the 14th Amendment. OK, the 14th Amendment um, was is the statutory, uh, the creation of that statutory citizen. OK, now there were citizens in the United States before the 14th Amendment. OK, because Article four, Section two of the Constitution says the citizens of the states are entitled to all privileged immunities of citizens in the several states. OK, now there's no real there's no, there, at that time there was never 
um, a United States citizen because because there was no citizen of the District of Columbia or, or there was no see a lot of people think America's their country that's pure prop, federal propaganda okay anybody who thinks America's a country would think that Europe's a country you know the Europe a country over there across the ocean you know with all those states like Germany and Italy and like that that nobody thinks that except for Americans who think that America's a country that America is a union, a confederation of states. These are countries. Read the Declaration of Independence. They are free and independent states. And as, and as free and independent states, the Declaration says they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, and do all other things states have a right to do. And that's what is not practice. And when, listen, when the government takes over educating the people, how intelligent do you think the people of America today are? And like I heard in the news driving home just like yesterday, the day before, uh, the Biden administration says that the reason that there's inflation is the Russians and COVID-19. Holy crap. Anybody who thinks that that's what's causing inflation don't understand banking and does, don't understand fiat currency. They don't understand. And they're not supposed to understand. Ignorant people are very easy to control. So the traditions that we have thinking America is a country is pure federalist propaganda. So what type of passport? Like I have a I have a federal a passport, have a federal passport that's issued too. by the federal government mm-hmm. allows me to you know travel around the world and be, it doesn't allow you to travel. Well, it just, it allows it just, me- just makes it easier because governments trust each other, <laughs> but it doesn't right. allow you to travel. You travel because you choose to travel. Right, but I don't know if if other countries would would let me in without. Well, right, because right? and just like any place, you know, whether you, they don't know who you are, they want to know who you are, and again, they trust, um, you know, their government. But there's no law requiring you to have a passport. Right. So, so what is this it's, other? It's other, a convenience. This other type of passport you're talking well, about. It's, it's not a passport. It's it's the passport application. You mm-hmm. see, the IRS didn't have their passport saying, "Hey, you have a federal passport." They had their own testimony under penalty of perjury. You submit passport application, and you never even looked up the terms. You answered the question, "Are you a United States citizen?" on your driver's license application, and you just said yes, like you know what the defin- definition of the term United States is. You don't. And you've never looked it up. You never looked it up in the tax code. You don't look it up in other statutes and codes. Every time you're asked, are you, um, you know, are you a United States citizen or are, do you live in the United States? Uh, we show in, in the tax code in 7701, the definition of, in the tax code for the term state and the United States is the District of Columbia. So you've been answering questions incorrectly and going along with thinking that you're in the United States when in reality you're in New York. And just so explain to you. So what is this process that you take people to? What, what do you? Well, we do the passport application, which you typically would do at the post office. But we have a 10 page explanatory statement that goes along with the application. Mm-hmm. We have a letter in there that, from the State Department that says if you don't agree with the wording of the oath on the application, you can supply an explanatory statement explaining your position. And we do. The oath is that application and oath is for federal citizens. And so we we are not 14th Amendment citizens. Our My citizenship is is whatever was before the Constitution even was. That's the kind of citizen I am, a state citizen. And citizen, state citizenship is based on habitation and domicile. If you want to be a citizen of Texas, how do you have to be a citizen? You just move to Texas. You cut off your, your connection with New York or wherever you were before, and you establish your habitation and domicile in Texas. You're now a Texas state citizen. Most of the time, people are agreeing to being a federal citizen just because they answer the question, are you a United States citizen? Multiple times, jury duty, voter registration, driver's license, all those places where you're asked many, many times, are you a United States citizen? And no, and don't ask the definition of that term. We ask for the definition of those terms, and majority of those times uh, come up as the District of Columbia. So, no, I'm not a citizen of the District of Columbia. And recently I've been looking at some court, Supreme Court cases, just phenomenal about the limits of of the citizens of the District of Columbia. The District of Columbia, we're talking about the 10 square miles that's called Washington, D.C. Its territories and, and possessions around the world is part of federal jurisdiction. 
And if you're a citizen of that jurisdiction or a resident of that jurisdiction, then you have an income tax liability, of course. So, um, so it's been a great journey. Right. Um, one of the, one more thing just on this is that the IRS says that this concept is frivolous. Okay. That's what they say in the courts. And the reason they say it's frivolous is because the person who says that they're a state citizen, they don't present facts and evidence to support their claim is what the IRS says. Everything we've been doing is creates facts and evidence to support the claim. And we've never had opportunity to be in court because it's easy to stay out of court. Okay. But the idea is that we have boatloads of facts and evidence to support our claim. What what have these pre this case law that you're citing? What 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 is it where Well just Supreme Court cases that reference there's federal citizens, state citizens, that federal federal citizens do not have the same protections in the Constitution. Is that the federal citizens are subject to the jurisdiction thereof. They're subject to you know federal uh, laws and such as that. So like for example, the word like immigration in America, it's a big hot topic, right? Immigration, the word immigration doesn't show up in the Constitution. Okay, so what is the federal government doing? Well, they're not immigrating into the states. They're immigrating into the District of Columbia. And that's what they're doing. And so, and they can do that. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 gives them exclusive legislative authority in all cases whatsoever. So most of the things that are happening where the federal government is doing things in the states, they're doing it either by offering money to the states or they are doing it in their jurisdiction. And all their paperwork is in the District of Columbia, without exception. It's just, it's just astonishing how spot on that all is. And that's federal jurisdiction because people fill out forms under penalty of perjury and they think they know what they're doing. And they don't because they don't read, they don't look up terms. Even attorneys, you know, that an attorney would understand federal jurisdiction and rights being secured would be as if um, doctors understand the physical body and how to be healthy as opposed to being a drug dealer or how a, you know, a minister may not know the scripture at all, but they are up there doing their things just because someone has education doesn't mean that they're even intelligent or even that they have a real knowledge of practical information that's there. And so that's where attorneys are. Attorneys aren't taught how to stay out of federal jurisdiction. Like that's a subject in college. No. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, so, but this has been stuff we've been doing, like I said, with the state department, we've gotten correspondence from the state department for our clients. We answer all their letters. It's really been an exciting journey. And then, so the IRS hasn't come after any of these people. For we have, anything? we have no clients that we, we have, certainly we have clients that are in correspondence with the IRS. We deal with that with clients, but those usually have been pre-existing and we're having to correct those records and the errors, um, that they've had in the past. So people will come to us with, you know, all sorts of IRS problems. And then we have to back them up and be, and, and basically set the record true or straight. And, and we do that with the information that we have, um, that we have not only in statute and code, but also in, in court cases. So mm -hmm. it's been, it's been, it's been exciting. Yeah. 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 Wild, wild stuff. So is there, is there any case law on, on this particular concept of basically. Well, I, I think the work we're doing is unprecedented. Now, like I said, there are Supreme Court cases that deal with federal citizens and state citizens and such as that. We have that information. Right, but for the purposes of, of, of federal, federal taxes. Taxes are one thing, but this shows up in different areas as well. You know, um, every executive order is for the executive branch, you know, can be ordering U.S. citizens. But if you're not a federal citizen, an executive order would not be you would not be subject to that jurisdiction if you're not in that jurisdiction. I mean, like I said about immigration, if uh, look, the Constitution is clear. The power the federal government has is in Article One, Section Eight. The word immigration is not in there. And then it says in the 10th Amendment, the power not delegated to the United States by the Constitution is reserved to the states and to the people. So how are they immigrating? Well, they're immigrating into the District of Columbia. That's what the paperwork says. That's what it means. That's how they're doing what they're doing, because they have no authority to do that in the states. The states have that authority. OK. And among other things that you see out there, the federal government doing like, how the heck they do that? How is that constitutional? Well, when you look up the statutes and codes, it's clear on these definitions. They're doing these things in the District of Columbia and their territories. 
And, and again, I say we have classes to show this body of work so that uh, people can come up and understand. We have a foundational class, a state versus federal citizenship class on the, the destinationfreedom.org website. And it, it's usually mind blowing for people. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is just exciting. And it's easy enough for children to understand. The thing that's so great is um, what I what I what I'm passionate about is the idea that if you have crypto winnings, if you're a federal citizen, you have to disclose them to the federal government and they are going to get their portion. And if you don't, that's considered money laundering. You go to prison for money laundering. That's the reality. And so people in our community, this Monero community, are going to have to live like runaway slaves unless you determine that you don't have an income tax liability and then you can live openly and free because you don't have the liability. And that's the great thing about it. I, you know, there's peace in this work because you're not hiding, sneaking, running and all that stuff. And, and so it, it becomes it becomes a, a, a wonderful way to live. And you know, some people will say, well, you know, what's the benefits? Well, let me see. I've saved a couple bucks from the 90s till today. <laughs> you know, it's like it's it's pretty simple that way. And then yeah, here's I mean, the thing, too, is that if you don't have a, yeah, I'm sorry, if you don't have a federal liability, you're, you're not going to have a state liability either because the state governments determine income tax on the federal. So that would mean no federal income, no state income taxes like in New York either. So I know you're kind of adding up the numbers and saying, man. <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of the crypto, it, would, it wouldn't be, um, you know, you, you would go to, you know, you'd be in trouble for not paying your, your capital gains tax. Um, well, be, well, there is some of that, but you know, the guys up in New Hampshire dealing with the IRS are not, well, they're dealing with certainly IRS, but they're being charged people ignorantly when they're, they think it's about cryptocurrency, the guys up in New Hampshire that are dealing with, they, that's what they want to make it like. It's about, Oh, they're wanting the crypto. That's not, well, I don't about. understand the money guys, laundering thing you're talking about. Well, like, well there's, um, um, you know, allegedly there, you know, um, you know, they were dealing with whether money that was coming into their church and and they were you know moving uh, crypto assets. People were buying cryptocurrency and they were, it was looking like donations. Oh right, right. They were, like they were so, being seen as being like a money service business. Well, correct. And, and anybody who's doing those exchanges, you know, yeah. if because here's the here's the reality: if you're a federal citizen, if you're a U.S. citizen, regardless of where you live, if you make these gains, now you may write off or whatever the deal is, but the liability is that you have to disclose. And so the idea is that um, yeah, if you make it's a, not about if you make taxes. Gain, if you make a trend, not unrealized gain, but yeah, if there's a realized gain, you have to disclose. Yeah. Again, though, that's a conversation about within the tax code. Right. I'm saying if you don't have liability, it's not a conversation you have about sure. whether there is income to be, you know, gained. Yeah, for, for saying the federal government doesn't exist, then yeah, obviously, you know. Well, no, not the federal government. It's like, despite that they exist, is that if you're not a federal citizen or resident alien, you're not going to have income tax liability. Right. End of story, full stop. Right. So whatever you make is yours and you don't have to disclose. There's no paperwork. There's no keeping receipts. And damn it, there's no, there's no write-offs. <laughs> so do you, do you file uh, an income tax return? Okay. No. Does the guy in Germany file an income tax return? <laughs> no. Maybe in Germany, but but no. I mean, no. He doesn't file because he's not in that jurisdiction. Hmm. So I don't live or work in the District of Columbia, and I'm not a federal citizen. So therefore, I don't have such liability. And then if you, if you were audited or whatever, you would. Well, you I'd have to agree to an audit, but I I don't I don't. There's no audits. I don't. I don't. Hmm. I'm not. Again, I'm not a, a U.S. citizen. I'm a citizen of New Hampshire. Right. But you're just saying you don't think they'll ever they'll ever seek to uh, come after you for for taxes for federal income taxes. Well, you can only go back three years. So let's see. Since the 90s, uh, you know, since I think the last communication I had when it was in like early 2000s um, was the last time. Uh, that I had any kind of communication with them. So it's not likely they would have to be dealing with the last three years. Mm. But I don't file or pay, so I don't file. So there's no, and I don't have bad information out there. I'm not filling out forms incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, the reason IRS does what it does is based upon your own testimony. You know, if you're right. filling out forms uh, and people who are employed or, you know, who uh, work for corporations, 
it's going to be very difficult for them to take a tax stand because the corporation is not going to um, take a tax stand with them and, and, and all that such. And because they fill out a W-4 form and allowing the corporation to withhold for them. Mm -hmm. And so a W-4 form is for federal citizens and resident aliens. And so therefore, you you know, if you're not going to fill out a W-4, the corporations can say, well, we can't hire you. You have to fill out these tax forms the way that we think you should. And so then that, that, you know, makes it difficult. Now you can contract with the company, be responsible for any taxes if you have any, and then, and then they can, you know, they'll pay you directly. They won't do withholding. And of course we have clients all the time that, you know, contract with corporations and such as that. It's not a problem. We do it all the time. It's great. Mm -hmm. But as if there, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice way to, to peacefully step out of that jurisdiction and just live your life without, you know, having to pay the pedophiles and the central bankers. Or just using Monero, right? And is another way. I mean, obviously, you know. Well, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, and that's I always say you need you need to pay your taxes. I always say on the show, you're you're, you're saying mm. you're, you're well, saying it's going to be a tough one to keep saying. Um, well, listen, uh, listen. I'm not you, saying I'm not I'm not saying at all. Don't yeah. pay taxes because we're all tax. We pay taxes all the time. You yeah. know, in in the can of soda, in that price of this soda, you're paying all kinds of excise taxes. We're just talking about one tax that income tax. If you have a liability, you certainly have to pay that. But if you don't have the liability, and if you knew that you didn't have the liability, then golly, wouldn't that be a sweet place to be? <laughs> and why wouldn't you? Unless, of course, you're afraid. That's a possibility. Do you, think do you can... love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous, and Monero. Do you think we get to the point uh, in the United States where there there's no capital gains tax on cryptocurrencies and it's just treated like a you know like the U.S. dollar when people transact with it? Um, well, I don't have a capital gains tax, so I don't know. It's already here. So what are you talking about? If you're in that jurisdiction, they're going to tax and regulate you regardless of whether we're calling it the capital gains tax or whatever. It's going to be the crypto tax. The crypto disclosure, who, these politicians are going to find, listen, they're always going to tax their citizens and the resident aliens, regardless of whatever they want to make it up and have it to be. It's going to be that way because one is it's an easy way to control people. And two, they get to determine, and you don't get to determine what you're taxed on. They're going to look at you. You're going to write in this amount, whatever. And then they're still going to tell you, you know, I mean, if, if you're signing that it's true, correct and complete, right? Well, what the hell do you know about tax law? You don't, you don't have a clue. You don't know when you're signing your tax form whether it's true. You don't know because they're going to tell you whether it's true, whether it's correct or complete. And then you'll give it to the accountant and he doesn't know if it's true, correct and complete because he's not relying on. I mean, as if people with accountants don't have tax problems. Yeah, of course they do because it, it's the nature of it. And so it keeps people very afraid. And look, the safest way is just pay I just don't want to deal with the IRS. You know, like that. That's the, that's the American people. But we're talking one tax. We're not talking about all taxation. Beautiful system. And corporations pay. And, of course, you everything we buy corporate it has corporate income taxes, and we all pay that. So so let's, let's uh, zoom out. Let's talk about crypto. So where do you see this all going? Crypto exists. People mm -hmm. are using crypto. I use crypto. You use crypto. I want to, you know – the Monero circular economy blossom here in the United States would be beautiful. Oh, yeah. What what do you think that's going to lead to in terms of? Well, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, like I have a client just before the call. He's he's in Oregon, and 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 the state of Oregon is is garnishing his wages, and so he's he's paid me in Monero, and so so I'll be doing work for him and pulling, you know, dealing with having him not be in that jurisdiction, we'll work that all out. So Monero's lovely in that capacity, <laughs> so, you know, and so that's the way he would like to pay. And so we don't, we're not doing um, dollars in that situation. So, um, but no, I, I think the dollar is collapsing. I think that it's, uh, this is the way it looks of this day and age for a, 
for a central bank to to fail and collapse. They're bailing out, printing all the money for all the big wigs and all the money and all the relationships they have politically. Everybody's getting in on the last screwing before you know it all comes apart. And this is what's going to look like. And and if they can keep kicking the can down the road for the rest of their lives, so they never go to prison, well, it'd be like that. And then and so. So I, the beauty of the cryptocurrency is that it's not like having to abolish the dollar. It's oh, it's yeah. coming in, uh, opting out is exactly. So it's beautifully coming in like like freedom things should do and letting the market say, wow, this is more stable. This is more private. I'll choose that. And so I encourage everybody to come into the crypto space. And then and then, of course, I, th I think the, the some of the best financial advice is the privacy um market because ultimately that's what see in the crypto space because it's so visible and there's a benefit to that it's not cash <laughs> you know but monero and 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 pirate chain and, and other uh, privacy coins that's cash where it's not visible and and you know they're not uh, tracking your identity and all that stuff that feels more like cash than bitcoin is because it's very uh visible you know, so so do you think governments, the U.S. government is essentially OK with with cryptos like Bitcoin, but not so much with cryptos like Monero? Well, remember, they're always they, their their whole thing is is about they want to be. Uh, look, every time government takes encroachment, it's always for your safety. Right. So they're not they're They don't they're not after Monero. Be, listen, they, they would use Monero. Bec and, and I would think that they'd want Monero because they're slime balls and this will work for them. OK, right, right. but but the, but the just like bag of cash will no longer be here. They're going to they're going to need Monero to. Uh, well, right. well, so so it'll definitely be good for them, believe it or not. But remember, they have you disclosing on your dollars. Oh, you deposited fifty thousand dollars. We need to know whether this is drug money or you're supporting the terrorists. All that's just like they're dr into drug money and and, you know, supporting terrorists all day long with the dollar. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like, don't pretend like the dollar's clean. All crime today is based on the dollar. So, you know, it's disingenuous. But the idea is that I love that it's going to be here despite government. Will they make it illegal? Yeah. Let me just tell you for the record, freedom's illegal. Okay. Okay. So that's the idea is that they're going to pretend like they're doing it to protect people when the reality is these are criminals that are, are wanting to have themselves be clean, like as if the dollar is beautiful. It's wacky. It's yeah, wacky. yeah, yeah. So you think they'll come down on, on Monero in the U.S. or they'll... Oh, I mean, uh, why wouldn't they? I mean, and, and again, it, they will as much as China doesn't like this stuff either. I mean, you know, and, and people are afraid that governments are going to create digital digital currency. We already have digital currency. It's your debit card. I mean, look, they can take it out if they want. You know, you want to buy on Amazon or whatever it is with your bank card. It's already in encrypted, uh, folks. It's not like as if, oh, yeah, I'm paying them with Federal Reserve notes. No, you're not. It's digital. And they're glad to have digital because they're having a tough time getting dollars around everybody that wants you know, five grand, 20 grand, thou, you know, hundred grand. Oh, go down to the bank and see if how fast you're going to get a hundred grand in cash. They're going to be pissing and moaning the whole time, of, you know, and then they're going to be counting it out. And you're like, where are you going with that? None of your business, <laughs> but that's the dollar. So, yeah. So, um, uh, you look, they are, look, JP Moore, all these bankers are in the crypto space already. So I, I don't see – it's a freight train that they're getting on. I don't see them interrupting it. What, what they want to do is regulate it, and that's the difference between Monero and Bitcoin is Bitcoin is very very um, regular. It's, it can be regulated easily because it's very visible, and the, and the privacy coins are not. So that's the beauty of it. It becomes more private, and that's what's important. Ultimately, your privacy um, – and not just about your data, but everything about you that's private is going to be a, is it's going to be a, a valuable commodity. And so the, I believe there's going to be whole markets and industries that are designed to keep you private. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll be premium. Yeah. So yeah. there'll be high dollars in that. 
uh, in essence, uh, only the wealthy, if you will, are, are going to be able to afford to be in the private. But remember now, there's any time of a collapse, it's not, there's no money going away. It's just an exchange, a movement of money, you know, from usually the poor or middle class to the wealthy. But, but in this space, the average Joe, and I'm going to do a crypto talk on our channel, on our platform tonight. Never in the history of the world has it been so available for such modest, um, uh, modest means people to create a great amount of wealth. This is this moment. I, I really encourage people to be in this space because it's, it's so good. I mean, what a blessing. I've never, ever thought I would have a conversation with my wife in the morning about, you know, we, we do the math. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be 60 this year. I got another 40 years. Let's say I live to be a hundred. We're talking 40 years. Okay. 40 years. Okay. So if I have a million dollars divided by 40, I get to see how, I don't know. It's not like a lot of money. I'm like, geez. So I'd have to get more than that. <laughs> so, so, I, so I'm actually playing it out as, and, and what's amazing is that in some of these, not even with Bitcoin, but with some of these altcoins, it's definitely doable to create that kind of wealth in a really short amount of time. And so I love that. It's, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that feels very exciting to me. Uh, yeah, a little, little dangerous, right? We saw with, with Luna. Have you, have, have you been following? Oh, oh yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I've heard that. I'm not, I, I haven't followed all that. No. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I keep it simple. I, I, I focus on, you know, digital cash and trying to pick the one that does that the best and realizing that that's going to be a utility that's here to stay that will yeah. grow in value over time. The thing I think is a blessing is, is the idea of that, you know, um, you know, we're, we're talking about currency and all this stuff. If you don't have provisions of seed and food, when when food shortages come about, it doesn't matter how much crypto you have. You're going to need seed and food and all that. And so the thing I love is that with or without the dollar, I'll still be in business because the 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 cryptocurrency market is open and it's and it doesn't have we don't have to wait we can immediately be using this that's why you should be going into your grocery stores and say hey are you set up on cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and say because i want to buy your food and so we don't think the dollar is going to stay around long so look let me talk to your corporate people let's get you set up with one look you take welfare stuff mm -hmm. let's get one register that will take cryptocurrency and then listen here's right some on, free right free advertisement the moment you set that up you spend a couple hundred dollars to get yourself set up to take cryptocurrency and you don't even have to invest in it you can just be selling your food with cryptocurrency right. okay and here's the beauty free advertisement because it's newsworthy hey here's a news report local grocery store now takes cryptocurrency wow that's a great thing that'll be that that'll pay for everything and so all of a sudden that's out there and and now the grocery stores in in, in, in available you know is available to take crypto then i would ask the grocery store give me a list of your vendors because i'll go and make sure that they will sell their things to you because you'll have cryptocurrency you and that is beautiful do you use crypto in your day to day? Are you are you? Oh no, I I'm, I'm a hodler. I I'm, <laughs> I'm in I'm in <laughs> no, but at the same time, at the same time, that recently, you know, I took some. I think it was Monero. I took some Monero, and I just purchased my greenhouse, and because and I normally would not buy anything in my crypto because I'm I'm holding it. Mm -hmm. um, but greenhouse was in the category of of that kind of a thing, and I've said like, okay, this, you know, I've we've done well so far, and I'm going to buy the greenhouse because it, it, it's part cool. of that preparation. So, mm -hmm. but no, I I don't typically, I I don't typically buy things as long as I can, uh, you know, I have Federal Reserve notes that people want that, I'm fine with that. But I have to be prepared as if it's not. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, I encourage people to use it as much as possible, and then you yeah. know, re replenish. You know, you could turn your fiat, more of your fiat, into crypto. That That's should be where you're saving, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, saving what in fiat? You're saying? No, I'm saying in in the crypto space. I would oh, never yeah, yeah, save, save in in no, the but, fiat you know, people, space. People, if they use if they use their crypto, if they use their Monero, I mean, I don't I don't think people should be just holding. Uh, they should be trying to spread it and then they could always replenish. Right. So, you know, anything, well, that's, you not, that's not the way you save. No, but I mean, I mean, you could do that and I get that, that use. And of course that's going to, I guess that'll you can't save, right. Cause if you, 
Well, I guess it's we'll for see, we'll see that the, have fiat coming the, in. The idea of, for me, and this not everybody, of course not, but for me, um, there, you know, I'm in. I want to build my my crypto res, reserves, mm -hmm. and and the two triggers for me um, is because I mean I would never pull crypto out and buy you know get Federal Reserve notes. To me, it's like why would I want to digress? Yeah. You know, like that. But I'm watching for the housing market to collapse, and I'm looking for the bank banks to collapse. Those two things is when I will be releasing Federal Reserve notes because I'm going to buy real estate um, when it's in the toilet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and look in the in the great you know depression or whatever it is whenever the markets were collapsing banks were buying up real estate i mean anybody that had wealth was buying real estate at the lowest price i mean you know yeah sure, sure so you know so that's that's those are triggers in my head so it's not like i'm just want to hold on to it for no reason you know there you have to have an exit plan because you know it should end end up your joy of your life whatever mm -hmm. that is don't don't hold too close because you want to make sure that you're living your life and not just waiting, you know, for some unknown future day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do think spending it is good though for purposes of onboarding new people, but I, I think you should be spending it also because of, out of a need. So I think that's where Monero really comes into play, right? Cause it makes sense. Right. The reason to spend it, it's private. Mm -hmm. It's like cash. Oh no, I agree. I'm, I, I mean, we see that there, right? As opposed to just spending your traceable Bitcoin, um, yep. Monero. There might be a you know there might be a reason why you wanted to use Monero to buy your greenhouse, right? Maybe you just no, no, oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and you know because I mean I because I moved out of the uh, the not everything, but the majority of what I had in Bitcoin, I moved right into the privacy because I think that that's going to perform far better than than Bitcoin is mm -hmm. easily. So it's the same thing of, do you want to buy gold or silver? Oh, I'll buy silver because it's going to perform better. That's all. Right, right, right. Not right. that I favor the silvery colored coin over the gold, you know, golden co colored coin. <laughs> it's both of an ounce, but golly, silver is going to perform better. So how'd you get into Monero? Was it was it via like Porkfest? Was it the New Hampshire crowd? Uh, how'd you find your well? Uh, you know, my my wife actually was because um, you know I like many people. You know, I I always. Um, I mean, I, when the, when the digital space came in, I, I was, the only reason I was on board or, uh, with, with anything digital was because I understood how the central banks were and anything that competed with them in my book, even if I wasn't on board with it, I was okay with that. That was the first place. But then I was listening to somebody, um, there were, there were, there were, um, I was listening to someone where they were talking about the difference in crypto and gold is that, you know, gold's a terrible form of money because money gold is is what created banks was you didn't want to travel with it it was dangerous to have it in your hands because you'd be yeah. robbed so so banks became the better something better than the gold because it was dangerous to carry your gold mm -hmm. so so you know so i can understand that but um so but what happened was i remember listening to somebody online i might have been jeff berwick or somebody and and this was the sentence they said about monero they said Monero is the Bitcoin they wanted. I'm like, son of a gun. That was brilliant. I'm like, it's the, yes. And I agreed with that. I'm like, because privacy was a big part of that. And so to me, yeah, I was like. Monero is what Bitcoin noobs thought they thought they bought, essentially. Well, yeah. I mean, so. That's, so that's Dr. Me, Daniel Kim. We got to give credit where credit's due. Is that right? Well, so, yeah. so I, I think that is brilliant. And to me, that was that was all it took. And so it wasn't like a lot of proof and evidence, but the concept there is like, well, that's that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm a purist in that regard. And so since then, you know, the conversation about privacy is huge. Yeah. So, yeah. And for our clients, privacy is huge, too. And um, and my wife, she's got um, crypto classes. She does a class to get people into the crypto space very foundationally. She helps them get set up and stuff and always keeping privacy as the as the, at the forefront because a lot of people come into the space and they're on um uh coinbase and all this they're tying their bank accounts to this and if you don't have an income tax liability you're you don't want to be filling out kyc improperly and so if you don't want to have an income tax liability you can't be filling out forms willy-nilly thinking that you're that you're going to have no tax liability all that stuff is designed to create tax liability and let me tell you every time someone wins the lottery who wins every time the, you win the lottery? The IRS wins every time they win the lottery. 
Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So yeah. hey, you think they're going to make the lottery bad? So if the IRS is going to make 25 to 30 percent of the winnings in cryptocurrency, do you think the federal government is going to abolish cryptocurrency? I don't think so. Right, right, right. Too easy. Too easy that, money. The house always wins. The house always wins. Is right. So <laughs> you know. So I. So that's you know. So I don't think that they. Um, um, so, you know, I don't think the feds are going to be interrupting it. They definitely going to want to regulate it. They definitely want to control it. And of course, they may demonize uh, certain cryptos. Of course, they're going to make privacy a crime. What do you have to hide? Right, right, right. Yeah. I have a right to remain silent like that. So what do you think the world's, world's going to look like, man? Do you have any kind of... Um... Well, I mean, most of the time that people think is bad. I think uh, in the short term, we're, you in, we're you in for a big beating. I think that there's going to be food shortages and all that. And I, my prayer is that in the suffering that's going on, I hope they're pointing to central governments and, and or, you know, central bankers and governments at the core of all of that misery. But they're going to play like, you see, they created the problem. They're going to come up with their solutions. And, of course, there'll be more encroachment on people's lives until there's an enlightenment, until people wake up to to self-government and wake up to uh, realize that all the problems and solutions in your life are local and between each other and you don't need governments in the middle of it. You think we're on the precipice of that or that's uh, I mean, we have crypto, right? Never thought we'd have that. And I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see the crypto thing coming. Uh, no, no, not back when we we're, you know, we we're looking at gold and silver as the as the way to, you know, prepare. Yeah, for the future. I don't think anybody really. No, I think I think it's a blessing. So, so do you, are we on the precipice of reaching this kind of awakening in society? Well, you know, we talk about that a lot, but, you know, in the, I do, I'm a freedom consultant, so I talk to people all the time and. The key to freedom is responsibility. So you have to ask yourself in, in all your social conversations, how much do you see people stepping up to be responsible for their lives and what their lives look like? If you're not hearing that conversation, then no. I think that where the world is now is that they are hating tyranny, but they're not embracing, I want to be responsible for myself first. People still are looking for permission and they're looking for help. And certainly look into their government for help still. I mean, if I mean, based on the last election, if you think voting for the federal government is a thing that you can do in the future, thinking you're going to get something good, mm, you're not there yet. There's not enough pain in your life yet. You still need to take it up the bum more because you're not, if you're looking to DC to do anything good at all, you still aren't woken up yet. No, I'm sorry. Nothing good without exception is coming out of the district of Columbia. These are not, these are people are not your friends. Okay. I mean, God, if, if the worst that we can do is our state governments and if they suck, you don't, don't think that something farther away is going to be more of a blessing. The federal government is never going to control the states. The states always control the feds. And if the states are irresponsible, it's going to be irresponsible all over. So you have to ratchet back to the local government, that's the only way you're going to see any kind of freedom and responsibility is that key. So I, I, I don't hear that responsibility yet. And of course, in our circles, you know, you, you hear that. But even in our circles among freedom minded people, I think many times they're still looking for permission and they still don't get the concepts of liberty and freedom to where they can flourish despite government or regardless of whether government is doing whatever they're doing. The closer you are to your earth, to your ground outside where your food is, the less impact world problems will have on you. If you're dependent upon corporate things, it's it's not a very strong, it's not a very safe place, to be honest with you. And th those are the concepts that people aren't really grasping, is what you're saying? Just this well, idea in, that in, if so, you in want, some if circles, you want freedom, you need to take control of your own domain, so to speak. In social circles out there, you, you don't hear that kind of conversation. Some, and I know people that I know who I know are, are movers and shakers and leaders in our local people who are freedom-minded truly and truly practice the non-aggression principle. And, and, and their relationships are good because they're mature and they know how to love each other and, and contribute and give. Charity should not happen through government. Charity should not happen through corporations. Charity needs to happen with each other and for each other locally. That's the best way charity is. And, and, but people that don't have confidence in that, 
And so that until that changes where where your best thing, it's like the Amish community. You don't see them looking out for anything other than within their community. And that's the way they look. They don't look beyond that. Let me ask you this. So f- the, the freedom fighter community, uh, I don't know. I mean, anecdotally, it feels like it's stronger than ever. Um, but there does seem to be a, a disconnect there between Monero and the freedom fighting community. It's not like every freedom fighter, every libertarian is out there and is like gung ho on Monero. What- no, matter of fact, they're, they're, the, the conversation I hear, because in our my group of people that we talk with, this people think that this whole digital thing has been created by the CIA and yeah. the government. All, and when I hear that, I, I'm saying, hmm, they don't hear the relationships like you and I and, and, and the people who are in this community and how they feel about government. They're not hearing that. Like as if, you know, we're, we're all duped. Because, you know, the central bankers have, you know, we can't just, we despise central bankers and such. So, you know, they you know, I, I think there's a, yeah, I think there is. And so, and again, you know, if we are only socializing with people that are freedom minded, which we typically do, I was having this conversation with my daughter the other day, we, we could find ourselves being tainted, only hanging with um, our little click, clicks and communities. It's just like a church. If a church becomes a click and it's not growing, that church is going to be where it is and it's going to die. So we're, we always have to be bringing new people in and, and talking about why we're doing it and all that. It has to be growing all the time. If it isn't, it's dying like a plant. It's either growing or dying. And there's no stagnation for a plant. It's either growing or dying. And so we have to remember that in our organizations and what we do, we want to be growing. And that means bringing in your neighbors and friends, talking freedom to them. I, you know, when I'm out socializing, I don't say like, you know, hi, my name is Christopher. You know, uh, do you want to stop? I don't talk to people about taxes when I'm socializing. I'm wanting to find out if they if they care about freedom. I have a lot to say, mm-hmm. but I want to qualify who is that I'm talking to. I want to know where their heads are at, you know. And so I'm I'm listening for them to like. God, I'm sick and tired of this bad thing or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, let me talk about cryptocurrency or let me talk to you about income tax or whatever we do. But mm-hmm. I'm looking to qualify people to see if they are uh, freedom minded. That's the first conversation I would have with somebody. This idea that that crypto is kind of an inside job, you know, it's started by governments. Maybe, maybe it was, whatever. But the, the whole point is, it's open source, right? But this idea that's being spread, where, where did that start in, well, the, in, uh, in the freedom and, loving community? It seems like and, a lot of people have been misdirected. Well, maybe some of that is or not. I mean, we don't know Satoshi or you know, you know what it is. I mean, they feel that way about the internet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, like you know, how much do they want to control the internet? Oh, anything that's on the internet. The government knows, and maybe they do. And so what if they, if they do on some level, you know, so when you have to fill out a form and they're like, we want you to give some information, uh, you know, it's a real simple thing is like, listen, if you want information on me, just, just reach out to the NSA. They got it all. Just whatever they have on me, they'll give it to you. So just ask them about me and they'll give you everything you need to know. Okay. <laughs> have a nice day. You know, I don't have to provide it, <laughs> but the idea is that if the federal government or, you know, the, uh, governments are controlling the internet. Maybe they did intend it for one thing, and maybe it's the the beauty of the of if I don't, I don't know if it's even possible. The more decentralized that even the internet will be, then that'll be good. And maybe that's uh, because blockchain and I and look, I'm not a tech guy, so I don't really understand it. But um, when you're looking at the new technologies coming into the space, and and currency or cryptocurrency is just one part of it. Maybe encrypting websites so that people can't access or that, you know, all of that could be coming about because of this industry. It's all brand new. We don't even know where it's going to go. I mean, they're looking at NFT, all the other stuff that are that, that, you know, I can't comprehend how art is playing out in this field. But I, but I'm observing going like, okay, wow. Okay. That's, that's an interesting thing. I don't quite get it, but you know, but, but there's something new here, but it could try to explain to your grandma, you know, back when there was email or, you know, AOL, you've got mail and all of a sudden you're doing, you know, electronic mail. Remember the post office was saying, we're now going, to, we're, 
I think they were saying something about that they were going to tax people uh, in their in their emails because this this was supposed to be for the post office. I remember those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. And then we said, oh, look, go pound sand, you stupid idiot. You know, <laughs> now what we're going to do is, listen, you can't get rid of the buggy with the horse. Don't you love horses? So every car we're going to tax to take care of every horse that's being put out of business. Really? <laughs> I mean, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I know. So I, I love all that. I love all that. So how about among the, the crypto people themselves? Why are they, you know, these freedom loving crypto people, why aren't they all over Monero? Or are we saying they are? Like, because, you know, there seems to be like a lot of people in, like you went to the Bitcoin conference. Mm. I think a lot of people that you talk to that are in Bitcoin would self-describe themselves as freedom lovers you know they want smaller governments they want you know whatever it is but yet they they seem to be okay with with you know completely traceable bitcoin what, what do you think the disconnect is there yeah i think it's a human thing uh it would be the same as like how many of us are on Facebook still and, and what are its benefits and, 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 you know, are, you know, what kind of a person's on there saying everything in my Facebook account is private and like, as if they don't understand, you know, what privacy is. So people still get benefits from doing things and people typically will make choices of not being on the outside or, you know, they want to be in the in crowd or, you know, and freedom's an interesting thing because, you know, I used to be pretty rigid about, you know, how we do stuff. And, I, and I've and i come to learn that you don't get to say what freedom is for somebody or their liberty. And so we're playing on a margin of how much in, how much out. When you're looking at lines of, of federal jurisdiction, there's lines. And, and so when people are crossing over and say, like, look, you can do what you like, but this is a jurisdictional line. So I think in freedom, people are in different places. And so they have different... Um, uh, insecurities and things like that. And so I think all these things are playing in for different people. Some people are purists. Some people are, are passionate about their privacy. Some people have um, conspiracies in their head. I mean, there are freedom people that are like, they're after me. I'm like, can you define who they are? We're not talking about a person. We're talking, yeah, the government's after me. There's no such thing as the government's after you because governments make up people. So people are in different places, just like people are different places in their religion or their meditation. So in the freedom community, you got funky people and you got people who are movers and shakers and you got everything in the middle. I think it's a mix. So I, you know, and, and, and even, well, when, where are we, the freedom, some of the freedom people in the world, we're on some fringes. Well, even in this microcosm of, of a community, there are purists. And so there, there's a central and then there are fringes in even in our community. And I think it's just going to play out that way. And how mature we are and how we love each other is going to determine how much we will protect other people's rights and whether we feel they're sacred enough not to violate them in our private you know, dealings. So. Mm -hmm. You know that's that depends on our character and our integrity. So yeah, yeah. I see it all. I mean, there are there are statists in the freedom communities. Hmm. There are people okay. who, who you know, like you know, people who like anybody, you know, because in my space, if you work for a corporation, you're not going to take an, a tax a tax stand. And then there are people who don't want to do their own business. So consequently, they're only going to work for somebody, and therefore they're never going to take a freedom stand with respect to their taxes. And oh, I just, yeah. I got to be okay with that. Yeah. I'm not, not surprised by that. And so that's, those are people in the freedom community. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, such, it's such a vague term, but yeah, I mean that the, obviously I guess so that the problem with freedom loving people is they, they tend to, to really not organize too well because they're resistant to that because they don't want to create a system that's now controlling them. So that, that's, you know, so, so, so are the statists doing community better than we are? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's a paradox. And I think, I, I, I think you pegged that precisely is that, and we should be aware of that. Like, okay, I have to be, we want to build community and it should be very organic. Mm -hmm. I mean, just mm -hmm. like the way you did your conference. It's very organic, you know. Yeah. And and I loved how that played out, and I think that's okay. And then maybe it's, it's hard, true that it's hard we're not to do that with so scale, though, right? That, well, that's see, that's what I was just going to say. Is is that you know how big does that get to where it loses it? And and so you know what the answer to that is decentralized. Mm 
mm-hmm. you know so you you have smaller groups that's and and then loosely they they support the next group or larger group but always decentralizing never give away your power so i think that would be a, a lesson and a rule that we learn in the crypto space is decentralization is always better because it, we're, the ultimate sac- sacredness is the individual who is is part of that decentralization you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whenever you're connecting with someone else you are willingly to waive certain r- rights by being in close proximity with others you know being with an, there is no one has a right to associate with another that's a privilege right is to disassociate is the right and that's what people want disassociation and people don't under if people don't understand that principle then it's going to be hard for them to uh practice that in their self-government if they um, don't realize that my association with you is by your permission it's a mm-hmm. privilege so it, it feels like certain people are are just more sensitive to it and and really feel it uh and others just, pro or pro or con you know, just, just this feeling let's say of like wanting to disassociate for example you know yeah. they, they just they walk about society and and they feel the these i know those people <laughs> they feel these pressures i you know i'm very familiar with them as well I, I think i might be one of them um you know and just others don't really you know they kind of ignore that it's not really a bother to them uh, yeah, yeah. Do you, hey, yeah. We, we got eight in the car. Do you want to get in? Nah, I'll walk. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> you guys go on. I'll be there. A little <laughs> I, I'm going to take my motorcycle. <laughs> right, but, right. but no, I mean that's okay. And 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 see, those people have something to say to the rest. You know. Mm. And and again, I think that's the voice that invites people. To like, hey, slow down. You know. Um, I mean, there's a great book. Uh, if you've ever read, um, you know, the Boston Tea Party, the author. Uh, his name is Kenneth something. I can't think of his last name, but uh, that's his um, uh, his pen name is Boston Tea Party. He's got a book called One Nation Under Surveillance. Hmm. And in there, he has a chapter in there about how you make friends and who your acquaintances are. That's really good stuff. You wouldn't have even thought about it. What is your relationship to your neighbor? How much information should your neighbor have? Well, how do you foster good, healthy relationships with your neighbor without becoming vulnerable because of your neighbor's vulnerability or whatever the deal is? And so when I'm reading that, I'm like, wow, I wouldn't have, where would you even think that way unless people like yourself or whatever who care about their privacy and, and wonder about their associations? Because when the shit hits a fan, it, unless you really know people and you know their character, you do not know how people are going to behave. You don't. And that, and like in my circle, is any, any client is a potential vulnerability because if IRS is going to squeeze someone who's a client, then that client can end up becoming um, a vulnerability for me. You know. All right, man. We're, we're rounding out the hour. All right. Where, where, can, where can people learn more about you? Where can they? Well, um, the website is destinationfreedom.org and, uh, um, and they can just uh, sign up for classes in there. And then I do, do talks. On- Monero? Do you accept Monero? Oh, sure. Your- Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So they just reach out and we'll do that transaction. Um, but we do uh, a Monday night talk. The website has the links for our Monday night talk, which we talk about state citizenship and IRS related things. And then our Wednesday night call, we'll, you know, I'll digress and talk about other freedom related things like tonight's call. I'm going to talk about cryptocurrency. It'll be good. I'll, it'll spin right off this. Yeah. And uh, so, um, so yeah, so that that's on the website. And then, and then once people are clients and they, and they come in and they want to do the passport process, uh, and we have workshops for that, or if they want me to do their paperwork, they, they can, um, you know, that's more expensive, but you know, they can have me do that. All that's available on the website and, and then we'll connect with them and, and create that help and support. They don't have to go it alone. Um, you know, we'll be a part of them. All right, man. And you'll be at pork fest, right? So well, I'm sure yeah. we'll continue the conversation there. I'll buy you a beer and we'll have some yeah. chit chatting. <laughs> so it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Awesome, buddy. Thank you so much, Christopher. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Doug. We'll take care. All right, brother. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. 
and please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.